You're now watching Way Back Wednesday, sponsored by Davenport Auto Park, the ride of your life. And also sponsored by Flora's Glass, serving the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. Good evening, friends, and welcome to another episode of Way Back Wednesday. I'm Randy Adcox. Uh, got what I think is an interesting show tonight. Um, we're going to go back a little bit and visit some topics from last week's show. Uh, and then we're going to talk about an address, and I'll give you a clue right now. You can be thinking about this address. 132 South Church Street. Be parking that around in your brain. 132 South Church Street. Most of you that watch the show have been in this um, location probably multiple times over the years. Um, but I about guarantee you there's some things about that address you do not know. So we'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, after last week's show, immediately after we went off the air, we had a viewer call in who's a little bit too shy to call in while we were on the air. And I understand that not everyone wants to get on the air. Uh, but they actually gave us the location for Garrett, Wink, and Garrett. If you remember last week's show, we were talking about this business uh, that was advertised in uh, this Rocky Mount uh, City directories and different places. Um, but I couldn't find an address for it or exact location for it. Well, as it turns out, uh, this viewer used to live on the road or down from that location where it is now, or where it used to be, I should say. And to kind of give you a ballpark, uh, if you're headed north on 301, when you get to the stoplight there, uh, where you would turn right to go to the old training school, what we used to call the boys' school, training school, reform school, it was a women's prison later years, and turn left. I think that's instrument drive, in fact. Um, right there on the corner, on the left, across from the Good Times Club, you know where that is, Good Times Club, well, right across from that, on that corner lot there, that's where Garrett, Wink, and Garrett had a location. And I say that because they actually had more than one I have since found out. Um, they were a very varied business. In fact, um, Garrett, Wink, and Garrett was based out of Greenwood, South Carolina. They got started around here in 1957, actually. And they were, of course, a mobile home dealer. Uh, but interestingly enough, they kind of got into a bunch of different things. And uh, we'll show you some ads here momentarily of some of the business that they got into and some of the types, different types of things that they sold and marketed and bought, sold, traded. And so it was interesting uh, to kind of put a little story behind Garrett, Wink, and Garrett. And um, so I tell you what, Lee, if we're ready, we're going to put the first picture up on the screen. This is actually a newspaper uh, clipping from the Rocky Mount Telegram, June 26, 1957. It's when I, this is the earliest advertisement I could find or mention of Garrett, Wink, and Garrett in the Rocky Mount Telegram. And you see there the headline says, House Trailers. This was in the classified ads section of the Rocky Mount Telegram. And the category was House Trailers. Today it'd be an insult to call a mobile home a house trailer. But in 1957, it was very much appropriate. Um, and that's the way they were referred to. And later years, of course, they got shortened to trailers. Uh, and then we got sophisticated and had to start referring to them as mobile homes or modular homes. Uh, as opposed to a stick built home. But anyway, you see the ad says, if you're in the market for a mobile home, we have it. We have the following makes. So listen to some of these models that they have now. Mobile Manor, Kentuckian, Champion, General, Liberty, Magnolia, M System, Melody Home, Silver Star, Prairie Schooner, Villa Nashua, Richardson, Pontiac, and several others ranging from 18 feet to 52 feet uh, long, 8 and 10 foot wide. We will trade for cars, trucks, furniture, cattle, <laughs> or use mobile homes. Now this is interesting here because if you look at the very bottom it says, it doesn't give a specific address, it just says intersections, Highway 301 and Highway 301A, which stands for Alton of course. Now technically that's right there where the bowling alley is. That's where um, 301 business where Church Street comes in to the 301 bypass there. But, and there is a, there's a mobile home lot there, by the way, um, right across from the bowling alley there on, on the uh, 301 bypass side. Um, but the, I think they may have had a lot there and also a little bit further north there on the corner across from the Good Times Club uh, at the intersection where the stoplight is. But anyway, that was one location. And I say that because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, they got into several different types of businesses. And in fact, Lee, let's go ahead to item number two. 
This is just another ad I found a little bit later in the year, September 26, 1957. And they're advertising another brand of mobile homes they carry. It says, stop, look, Spartan and 29 other makes of mobile homes arriving daily. A floor plan to suit every family. Garrett, Wink and Garrett, the South's largest dealers in mobile homes, 301-301A North, Rocky Mountain, Carolina, opens at 9, and 9 to 9 daily. So this was a booming business. You know, mobile homes uh, had been around for a few years by 1957. Uh, they were beginning to be become more popular, um, not only as vacation places at the lake and at the beach and so forth, but people were realizing they could get into a home, particularly a young couple just getting started, relatively inexpensive. Um, and so, you know, they began to gain in popularity. Mobile home parks began springing up all over the place, or trailer parks as they referred back then. Again, it's, it's now, uh, it's, it's not considered appropriate to refer to them as trailer parks or trailers uh, or uh, trailer homes. Uh, but nonetheless, the trailer parks began to pop up and um, became quite profitable for a lot of people. Uh, you know, if you had a little piece of land, and zoning requirements would allow you to put a mobile home park or trailer park on your property. Um, I, I had an uncle, in fact, who uh, had a mobile home park down in uh, Fort Walton Beach, Florida for a number of years and did quite well with it, in fact. Anyway, okay, let's move on to item number three. February 1960, this ad appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram for Garrett Wink and Garrett, and as you see, they had ventured out. And this ad, they've got a 1955 Ford Fairlane, they got a 1955 Studebaker Speedster, uh, Chevrolet two-door, they got a Packard. Uh, down at the bottom it says, we have several pickup trucks, boats, outboard motors, and they're going at bargain prices. Garrett Wink and Garrett, Highway 301 Alton, um, Rocky Mount. So, as I said, they began to get into various other things and other types of products and merchandise. A good portion of this stuff that they sold was, of course, used that they had taken in on trade. And so, and probably, uh, and I hate, they, they didn't ever mention this, but I would imagine some of this stuff ended up being repossessed too. Uh, people couldn't make the payments on the home and they would get repossessed and everything inside would become the, uh, of course, the property of Garrett, Wink and Garrett. And so their inventory, if you will, began to grow and in, in quite large, in fact. Item number four, Lee, if you would, October the 8th, 1965, Garrett Wink and Garrett expanded to the point of having a bargain center. Uh, apparently, and this, if you look at the very bottom of this ad, it actually says here, Highway 301 north of Bowling Alley. So this is the closest I've seen yet to any specific location. Uh, but in any case, they're advertising here, as you can see, refrigerators, electric stoves, dinette suites, heaters, gas heaters, coil springs, metal beds, wardrobes, dressers, odd tables, odd chairs, sofas, two-piece living room suits, new and used furniture. So they had this bargain center, I guess it was right there with the trailer park, or the mobile home lot, whatever you want to call it. And um, so again, they were selling merchandise. I'm sure a large amount of this stuff probably came out of repossessed homes, um, but they had to do something with it. So they turned around, opened this bargain center, and we're selling these things to anyone who might need some used furniture either to equip their home or their new mobile home if they so chose. Um, in fact, things got so uh, going so well with them, they opened up another location. Item number five, Lee, this is a little blip that appeared in the Rocky Mount City Directory in 1963. Oh boy, it zoomed in real quick, didn't it? Um, but anyway, this is actually listed as um, under the category of warehouses and merchandise, Garrett Wink and Garrett, 239 Tarboro Street. And that's right along in there where Edgecombe Community College is now of Tarboro Street, the area right over there. And this is where they had another location where they were selling all kinds of things. Um, and I actually had two ads back to back. I'm not sure quite, they, they appear two different locations. Um, Lee, go ahead and put up item number six. It's the same um, Rocky Mount City Director, 1963. Uh, can we zoom out a little bit? I don't know why it zoomed in automatically when you clicked on it. But anyway, uh, this just shows uh, the lady who was managing the operation on Tarver Street in 1963. It was a lady named Martha Carson. Um, and I'm not sure 
For some reason, I want to say that name rings a bell with me, but the address again was 239 Tarver Street, and you see, it's kind of hard to see it's blown up so much there, but anyway, uh, they're advertising used furniture. So again, 239 Tarver Street, they were selling some of this used furniture that I'm quite sure came out of some repossessed homes, and um, so they had the location out beyond the bowling alley on 301. They had this one on Tarboro Street. And in mid-1960s, business was booming for Garrett, Wink, and Gary in Rocky Mountain. And by the way, uh, as I said earlier, they were based in Greenwood, South Carolina, but they had locations all over the Southeast. I saw uh, advertisements when I was looking at the, the newspapers.com website in Alabama, Kentucky, um, Mississippi, um, Florida, Georgia, all over the southeast, Garrett, Wink, and Garrett had mobile home dealerships. And so they, they were doing quite well for, for a number of years. By 1965, they had picked up some advertising um, tokens, if you will, and uh, I, I wish I could get a collection or see a collection, I'm sure there's probably thousands upon thousands of wooden nickels that have been used over the years to promote businesses. And there you go, there's a, a better view of that ad we about a while ago. Um, Ms. Martha Carson was a manager, as I said, at 239 Tarver Street for the Garrett Wink and Garrett uh, warehouse business over there. Item number seven, Lee, this is just, uh, one of the, I'm sure you've seen them there. They used to be real popular, you don't see them much anymore, but the wooden nickels, about the size of a 50 cent piece, and the old slogan is, don't take any wooden nickels, of course. But anyway, Garrett Wink and Garrett, had one you see there, uh, they're located, they were located, home based anyway, out of Greenwood, South Carolina. And um, so this was the, the front of the, I'm sorry, this was the back of the wooden nickel. And if you flip it over, Lee item number eight is what it looked like on, there you go. And it's just of course a wooden nickel. As I said, I've seen a, golly, a bunch of these things over the years. They're very popular in the 1960s, even into the 70s, uh, for advertising tokens. Uh, businesses would give them away as a promotional thing. And um, in fact, I had two or three at one time. I'm not sure whatever happened to all of them, but uh, people would give them to me and I'd stick them on a shelf somewhere, stick them in a drawer, sock drawer, whatever. Uh, but they were real, real neat little promotional tools and, and items that were used to uh, advertise businesses. By 1968, Garrett Wink and Garrett was still going strong. They were advertising in newspapers, magazines, um, even high school yearbooks got into the business of advertising for Garrett Wink and Garrett. Item number nine, if you would, Lee. This is from the 1968 North uh, Edgecombe High School yearbook. And you see here, Garrett Wink and Garrett had a pretty good size ad there. And it says, the South's largest dealers of mobile homes over 50 years combined experience in the sales, service, satisfaction, and growth of the mobile home industry. And Mr. L.R. Benfield was the manager of the one here in Rocky Mountain uh, in 1968. So, as I said, during the early to mid-1960s, Garrett Wink and Garrett was really going gangbusters around uh, not only this part of, of, of in, in Rocky Mount, but also in their uh, South Carolina location. As I said earlier, I, I saw references and ads from different states in the Southeast. So it was a, a large company employing thousands of people. Um, they were manufacturing more than two dozen different types of mobile homes. Um, I'm sure a great many of those ended up down at the beach, probably a bunch ended up at places like Gaston Lake uh, and other you know, reservoir type places around the country uh, on the water's edge or close to it. And as I said, it was, it was a, a fairly inexpensive way to get into a home um, and for someone just starting out, a young married couple just getting started, it was a good fit, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, and it helped a lot of people get started. I know friends of mine um, that when they first got married uh, opted to purchase a mobile home, either new or used, and you know, pay for that little by little until they could afford to buy a regular quote unquote stick built uh, stick built home. And so it was a good option, and I think for a lot of young people, it probably still is. But anyway, okay, moving on. Item number 10, Lee. Uh, I mentioned the Bargain Center a while ago. They had the used furniture location there on uh, Tarver Street, but that Bargain Center out on 301 by the main trailer park lot uh, was really going by like gangbusters. Uh, this was 1970. They got unbelievable bargains, the headline reads. Brand new refrigerators and deep freezers at wholesale prices. Best buys in, ha in town. Uh, unheard of bargains in new and used furniture. Special purchase, brand new two-cycle trailblazer motorbike, regular price 376 on sale for 195 um, 
as long as they last, by the way, the fine print says. It says the best buys in a tri-state area, mobile home from a travel trailer to 24, 24 feet wide, up to 60 feet long. Uh, special buys on a few repossessions, catch up, back payments, and move in. And of course, this is another Garrett Wink and Garrett operation uh, located at Highway 301 North. So they were, they were really doing well. And I'm not sure what happened. Um, this was 1970 and probably this was about the height of business for Garrett Wink and Garrett, at least in Rocky Mount. Uh, they continued operating for some time in other parts of the South. Uh, but uh, unfortunately by 1972, the corporation that was Garrett, Wink, and Garrett in North Carolina was uh, administratively dissolved and eventually went out of business here in, in North Carolina anyway. Uh, by 1972, as I said, they were out of business. Item number 11, Lee, this is actually an ad that appeared. Um, P&Y Mobile Homes took over the remaining inventory and property uh, that had previously belonged to Garrett, Wink, and Garrett. As you see there, it says, PMI Mobile Homes Incorporated. By the way, now you notice we're being advertised as mobile homes and no longer trailers. Uh, we've kind of gotten a little bit of sophistication now. So we can't refer to them as trailers anymore or trailer houses. Now they're mobile homes. Uh, formerly Old Garrett, Wink, and Garrett, located on Highway 301 north of Rocky Mount. Now at big discounts, all mobile homes formerly stocked by Garrett, Wink, and Garrett below cost Spaces for rent, city water and sewer, and you see there, and I didn't realize, um, well, P&Y Mobile Homes obviously had more than one location. They had one in Sharpsburg, one in Rocky Mount, one in Wilson. As far as I could tell, I only saw one location for Garrett, Wink, and Garrett in this area, and that was the one in Rocky Mount, as far as a mobile home lot, I mean. They had, of course, the uh, bargain um, used furniture location down on uh, Tarver Street, and I'm not sure, like I said, uh, the call that called last week uh, had a very distinct memory of, of, that, of this location being out there across some good times on that corner um, there at the stoplight on 301. But this other ads that I've seen that reference uh, the uh, intersection of Highway 301 and 301 alternate, again, that's right there at the bowling alley. And there is a, if you're headed north just after you pass the, uh, uh, Don Bullock Chevrolet on the left-hand side, of course, is a mobile home lot there, so I'm wondering if maybe they had that lot as well. I'm not sure. Uh, I've not seen anything that specifically references two lots, uh, but apparently they were out in that immediate area anyway. So I tell you, I just realized it's time for our first commercial uh, break. Lee, bring it back to me. Uh, when we come back, we're going to go dive deep into history. Uh, I say deep, I mean deep for Rocky Mountain history anyway. Uh, I mentioned at the top of the show about 132 South Church Street. So for those that are already familiar with that address and you know what I'm talking about, bear with us. Uh, we're going to go back uh, quite a ways, and I think we're going to surprise you with some of the things that were located at that address many, many years ago. So I'm going to where we'll be right back with more Way Back Wednesday. Today, having the right health care plan tailored to your specific needs is vital to your peace of mind. The question is not if you will need the coverage, but when. And when that time comes you want to be prepared. With the rising cost of medication, medical procedures, and doctor visits, you should know which is the right insurance plan for you. From life insurance, affordable health care, to Medicare. There are a lot of insurance options available and choosing a plan can be overwhelming. Having Gus Tullis as your insurance professional on your side will give you peace of mind, because you will know you are covered with the insurance that meets your needs. Hello, my name is Gus Tullis of Gus Tullis Insurance, and I've been helping people with their insurance needs for well over 20 years. Call me today, I'll answer any question you have. 252-937-6913. Looking forward to hearing from you. 
I'm Daniel Moss, owner of Cornerstone Funeral Home, and I'd like to invite you and your family to give our family an opportunity to serve you in your time of need. And we offer a full line of funeral services, everything from visitations to graveside services to cremations on site with a lot of crematory, as well as a banquet hall to meet the catering needs of our families that we serve. We offer catering service. We offer refreshments prior to visitations and services of our family. And we want to invite you to come and experience the difference here at Cornerstone Funeral Home. There's a main nerve that leaves your back that goes into your hip and goes down your leg. It's called the sciatic nerve. A back injury can put pressure on that nerve, causing pain, numbness, tingling. Chiropractors can actually help that. At the Hammer Chiropractic Center on Sunset, we know exactly what to do. We have very good relationships with the doctors in Rocky Mount. We like to co-manage people's care. Some medications may help us do our jobs, and our jobs may help their medications work better. If you or your loved one is living with hearing loss, and if you haven't found a solution that fits your lifestyle, then you should consult with the local experts at the new Hearing Aid Urgent Care in Nashville, North Carolina. Hearing Aid Urgent Care is a place to go for over-the-counter hearing solutions that will improve your daily life and communication between your loved ones and you. Purchasing in our store does not require any prescription or medical recommendation. Our team of experts does recommend a hearing examination so we can help you purchase the correct product for your personal needs. We hold regular listen and learn events so you can ask questions and work with the high quality products from our vendors to find out what hearing device will best suit you before you buy. Open Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you can call 252-459-4008 to find out more information. Hearing Aid Urgent Care located at 102 West Nashville Drive in Nashville, North Carolina. We are back. Um, you know, last week we were talking about old advertisements and businesses that used to be and went away over time and uh, locations that uh, used to have a structure, a building, if you will, and that you know, over time was demolished and torn down and done away with. Um, and that has happened many, many times over the years, all over Rocky Mount, all over the country for that matter, but certainly, uh, well, we got a call. Let's get this call. Hello, caller, you're on the air. All right, I'll be very quick. When you were talking about that address for Garrett Wink and Garrett Morgan Center at 239 Tarver Street, that's in the block valve where the Hitchcomb Community College is. That right. would have been just east of where Allen Mims Ford and prior to that, the Rose Buick location was. There was a large furniture store there in that block, and I don't remember what the name of it was. It seemed like the name of it was Gay's Furniture Store. And that's probably where that Garrett Wink and Garrett uh, Appliance discount place was. Could have been. Could have been. And the PNY Mobile Home Place in Sharpsburg, the Y stood for Yoda. Y O D E R. Okay. I don't know what the P stood for. Well, maybe somebody else knows and call in and tell us. All right. All they, right. they, I think, went for a while. They manufactured some mobile homes in the town of Sharpsburg. Mm-hmm. Okay. Goodbye. Yeah. All right, buddy. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Um, but yeah, obviously, over the years, uh, buildings and structures were built and torn down and rebuilt. Uh, new buildings built right on top of the foundation of other buildings. And so, what I'm getting into now started out, those of you that follow me on Facebook probably already know what I'm talking about. I got to thinking early this week about, actually over the weekend, I got to thinking about um, 132, if you haven't figured this out, 132 South Church Street um, was most recently the uh, location for Central Cafe after they moved from Thomas Street over. Uh, in fact, they closed up uh, last year and then there was a fellow named uh, Anthony who's got the space now. And so, and of course, prior to Central Cafe was there, at some time in the past, I remembered that the Duchess restaurant was there. And so I was really just kind of curious about, I couldn't remember, uh, the dates from when the Duchess opened uh, and when it closed. And I was really curious whether or not it opened up before I was born 
And so I put a post on Facebook and said, okay, I'm trying to resurrect a timeline here. So anyone can help me out. I want to know when the, uh, the Duchess uh, started and when it ended there at 132 South Church Street. So that fired off a whole bunch of posts from other people, different people telling about different things. And of course, I got to doing some digging myself and looking at uh, old Rocky Mount City directories, uh, looking at the newspapers.com website, of course, talking with different people. And what I found was really surprising to me, I think it will be to you as well, uh, but I went all the way back to 1912. And in 1912, on that corner where the Central Cafe slash Duchess slash a half a dozen or more actually businesses have been located over the years, there was a house there. Um, and in 1912, it was a, uh, the residence of Mr. James Reams, who was a police officer. He was actually there from about 1908 to sometime in the early teens, 1912, 1913, along in there. In fact, Lee, let's put up item number 12. This is a Rocky Mount City map taken of that area from the, uh, the Sanborn insurance maps. This is a 1912 map, as you see, as I said. And as you can see here, this is Church Street, we're almost right dead middle of your screen, running up and down, north and south there. And Western Avenue, running across ways near the bottom of the screen. So right there, what I've got circled in black, that is 132 South Church Street. Uh, right across the street, if you're headed directly at, below that, that pink building, that's the First Baptist Church. It's the original location, First Baptist Church. And in 1912, I'm not sure how long First Baptist Church had occupied that corner prior to 1912, but in 1912 they were already designated and showing up on the map there. And as I said, directly across the street, across Western Avenue from First Baptist Church was this residence. And it belonged to a police officer by the name of James Reams. And Mr. Reams was there from 1908, 1909, uh, up through about 1912, 1913. And then by 1914, uh, another gentleman bought it, and his name was George Sandlin. And George Sandlin stayed there for, oh golly, a few years, in fact. And there were some gaps. I don't have all of the, uh, every year, I should say, of the Rocky Mount City directories. You've heard me say before that there's probably a good dozen or more uh, that have been digitized and made available for download over the internet. And over the last few years of doing this show, I have downloaded all of those, all of the available ones anyway, onto my computer in my office. So I can now pull them up at any time. And one neat thing about uh, the Rocky Mount City directories, at least most of them, this doesn't uh, occur in all of them, but in most of them, in the front of the book, after you get past the advertisements and all that kind of stuff, and you get into the actual family name listing, if you want to look up someone by their family name, for example, you can do that. As you go toward the back of the city directory, you get into all the street names. It lists all the streets in Rocky Mount by address, and it will tell you at any given address what occupied or who occupied that location at that given time. So I was able to utilize these city directories in conjunction with the newspapers.com website, and I might add also that some very helpful information from people who uh, posted on my Facebook page and gave me their recollections. I had some family members of previous owners of businesses there post uh, comments also. So anyway, moving right along, by 1930, I'm going to jump forward a little bit here. By 1930, there was a gentleman by the name of Joseph G. Lancaster. And Lee, go ahead to item number 13. This I thought was really interesting. Mr. Joseph G. Lancaster. Can you zoom out of that, Lee, a little bit so we can get a little better view of it? I don't know why it keeps bouncing in so big like that. Uh, but anyway, he ran a Tom Thumb miniature golf course. There you go. Uh, and you see the address, 132. And this was a listing, by the way, in the 1930 Rocky Mount City Directory. And, of course, at this point, it's listing streets, and I'm on Church Street, and I scrolled down until I saw 132 South Church Street, and Mr. Joseph G. Lancaster was running a Tom Thumb miniature golf course there at that location. Now, I'm guessing it was probably something in his yard. There was a house there, obviously, um, and so I'm guessing this is maybe a little sideline business, something for the kids maybe, I'm not sure. But it made the listing in the 1930 Rocky Mount City Directory, as you see, the Tom Thumb Miniature Golf Course. Okay, so by 1937, I think, and I've not been able to confirm this, but I think 
either the house that was there was torn down and another one built there or the one that was there was remodeled in some manner but I believe it became a boarding house and the reason I say that um, in the 1937 well the Rocky Mount Herald you've heard me mention that newspaper uh, it was in publication around Rocky Mount kind of in parallel with the Rocky Mount Telegram for a number of years but item number 14 let's go ahead and put that up for the viewers number uh, 14 October 8th 1937 this ad appeared in the Rocky Mount Herald newspaper. And as you can see there, Dr. R.H. Roney, a chiropractic physician uh, specializing in acute and chronic disease, announces the opening of his offices at 132 South Church Street. And you see there, corner of South Church and Western Avenue. So Dr. Roney, this chiropractor, opens up a chiropractic business there, or office, practice, whatever you want to call it, there at the same location, 132 South Church Street. However, and keep in mind, this is 1937 when this ad appeared here. In the 1930, let me get my numbers right here before I tell you something wrong. All the way up through 1948, this was listed as a location for Dr. Roney's uh, chiropractic uh, location. But also, um, it goes back to 1937. So 1937, Robert Roney was here, Dr. Roney was here. But if you remember from the previous ad, uh, from 1930 to 1942, and I was able to confirm this by going through various Rocky Mount City directories, up to 1942, Joseph G. Lancaster was also listed as being a residence at 132 South Church Street. So that's why I said I'm thinking it may have been like a boarding house, um, or at least a, a home that they rented out rooms, uh, perhaps for uh, tenants, and Mr. Roney may have opened up his chiropractic business in a rented room in this boarding house. That's a possibility, we don't know for sure, but there was some overlapping there of tenants uh, between 1930 uh, and 1937 when two different people were listed in the Rocky Mount City directories as being at the same address. Okay, fast forward a little bit, item number 15, Lee. By 1950, this was kind of neat, 1950, the Rocky Mount City directory shown this ad um, there you go and again the way the city of director is listed you see there it says church s that stands for uh, south church of course and then it lists the addresses and you see that's 132 so that would be 132 south church street and this is in the 1950 city directory and you see what was there the little antique shop and julia johnson's art studio so again it makes me suspect that maybe there was a boarding house there and whoever owned the boarding house, could have been this Mr. Sandlin that was there in the early 1900s, or it could have been Mr. Lancaster who had the house and was listed as residence there from 1930 to 1942 in various Rocky Mount City directories. But in any case, by 1950, Julia Johnson had an art studio and a little antique shop there in the same location. Um, I looked to try to see if I could see any articles or any newspaper clippings about uh, a new building being built or a demolition of an old building, anything that would tend to suggest that the previous building had been torn down and a new building had been built at this location. And I did not find anything along those lines in this time frame. Okay, so moving along, by 1952, the Rocky Mount City Directory listed here at 132, item number 16, Lee, I'm sorry. 1952 Rocky Mount City Directory listed at 132 the little antique shop. Uh, so of course this is the same location we just looked at um, that uh, Julia Johnson's art studio and antique shop was at. So she was there from 1950 at, at least uh, through 1952 we know because at the very bottom of the list now you see the little antique shop and again this is if you see at the very top of the page you see Church S that stands for South Church Street and at the very bottom of this listing, you see 132. So that's the address, 132 South Church Street. So again, from 1950 through 1952, at least when the 52 city director was published, Miss Julia Johnson had her little antique shop there. And there's no mention, by the way, in this ad about her art studio. So maybe she ditched the art studio and just kept running an antique shop. I'm not sure. But don't you know in 1950, if she was running an antique shop there, she had to have some really, really old stuff. I'd love to have gone in that place then. Okay, moving along. 
1955, the first restaurant that I could find was listed uh, at being as being at 132 uh, South uh, 132 South Church Street, and oddly enough. This ad here appeared, by the way, in a 1955 city directory, and it was called Spears Restaurant. Uh, and it says in the heart of downtown Rocky Mount, um, Ellis W. Spears Jr. was a proprietor. He and his wife run the business. Uh, it says we also have curb service for your convenience, all types of sundries, sodas, sandwiches, and so forth. Something interesting I, I found about the Miss Spears herself, and I had her name somewhere, and I, I forgot to write it down. But the Ellis Spears' wife, Mrs. Spears, was good friends with none other than Lucille George of Carolina Cafe. And in fact, these two ladies uh, went on a field trip, if you will, together. And I believe it was, golly, is it in New York or somewhere? Uh, there was a restaurant tour um, uh, seminar, whatever you want to call it, for people who owned restaurants. And Lucille George and Miss uh, Ellis Spears' wife uh, went together, and it said you know they were friends and uh, accompanied the trip because they were both in a similar business. Miss George running Carolina Cafe, of course, and Mr. and Miss Spears running Spears Restaurant. So, 1955, this was the first instance I found of an actual restaurant being located at 132 South Church Street, and again. It was one of several, as you will see in just a minute. And I just realized we're about time for our second commercial break. So, Lee, I'll tell you what, bring it back to me. Let's go ahead and get this next break in because uh, I've got several more pictures and ads I want to share with the audience. And we'll take your calls at any time, by the way, 407-1111. Uh, my phone is just about dead. I forgot to charge it up today. So, ordinarily, I tell you, feel free to call me on my cell phone, but you may not get me tonight if you call my cell because I think it is about to die. We'll be right back at these words from our sponsors. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Today, having the right health care plan tailored to your specific needs is vital to your peace of mind. The question is not if you will need the coverage, but when. And when that time comes you want to be prepared. With the rising cost of medication, medical procedures, and doctor visits, you should know which is the right insurance plan for you. From life insurance, affordable health care, to Medicare, there are a lot of insurance options available and choosing a plan can be overwhelming. Having Gus Tullis as your insurance professional on your side will give you peace of mind, because you will know you are covered with the insurance that meets your needs. Hello, my name is Gus Tullis of Gus Tullis Insurance, and I've been helping people with their insurance needs for well over 20 years. Call me today. I'll answer any question you have. 252-937-6913. Looking forward to hearing from you. I'm Daniel Moss, owner of Cornerstone Funeral Home, and I'd like to invite you and your family to give our family an opportunity to serve you in your time of need. And we offer a full line of funeral services, everything from visitations to graveside services to cremations on site with a lot of crematory, as well as a banquet hall to meet the catering needs of our families that we serve. We offer catering service, we offer refreshments prior to visitations and services of our family, and we want to invite you to come and experience the difference here at Cornerstone Funeral Home. There's a main nerve that leaves your back that goes into your hip and goes down your leg. It's called the sciatic nerve. A back injury can put pressure on that nerve, causing pain, numbness, tingling. Chiropractors can actually help that. At the Hammer Chiropractic Center on Sunset, we know exactly what to do. We have very good relationships with the doctors in Rocky Mount. We like to co-manage people's care. Some medications may help us do our jobs, and our jobs may help their medications work better. If you or your loved one is living with hearing loss, and if you haven't found a solution that fits your lifestyle, then you should consult with the local experts at the new Hearing Aid Urgent Care in Nashville, North Carolina. Hearing Aid Urgent Care is a place to go for over-the-counter hearing solutions that will improve your daily life and communication between your loved ones and you. 
Purchasing in our store does not require any prescription or medical recommendation. Our team of experts does recommend a hearing examination so we can help you purchase the correct product for your personal needs. We hold regular listen and learn events so you can ask questions and work with the high quality products from our vendors to find out what hearing device will best suit you before you buy. Open Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you can call 252-459-4008 to find out more information. Hearing Aid Urgent Care located at 102 West Nashville Drive in Nashville, North Carolina. And we are back. You know, during the break, we had a caller uh, that uh, solved one mystery for us. The PNY in PNY Mobile Homes stood for Pittman and Yoder. Uh, Pittman and Yoder were two very prominent uh, families in Sharpsburg uh, in the 1960s. Um, the caller says she thinks uh, it was Benny Pittman and Ernie Yoder were the two gentlemen who were involved in the PNY. Um, in fact, the, she said the location was there where Hardy's is now in Sharpsburg. If you're coming from Rocky Mount, uh, we had to stop right there in Sharpsburg on the left-hand side. There's a Hardy's there, and she said that was a location for PNY. They had a used car lot there too, and, and sold mobile homes and so forth. Uh, but PNY, Pittman and Yoder. So there you go. Okay, um, we were talking about before the break, 132 South Church Street, and you know my memory goes back as far as the Duchess, and that's and I, I can't, I don't have any recollection of anything beyond the Duchess or or before the Duchess. And so it was really interesting to me to hear about all these other businesses that have been there over the years, going back literally more than 100 years, 19, uh, 1908, 19, uh, 1908, 1909, uh, when Mr. James Reams, uh, Rocky Mount police officer, lived there. And so, of course, at that time it was a residence. And as I said earlier, I think it was a boarding house too. Up and get another call, let's get this call. Hello, caller, you on the air. When I was a child, that building on the corner there, where the uh, Central Cafe was, when that building, as it is now, the brickwork and everything, was built sometime in the 50s, it was known first as the Ivy Room. We're getting there. You're a little ahead of me. We're getting there. All right, I'll let you go. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was indeed. It was the Spears restaurant first, however. Uh, now, I'm not sure whether the Spears restaurant had uh, their own building and it was torn down. And as Eric says, the Ivy Room built the building that we know now as uh, Central Cafe, Duchess, and so forth. Uh, but yeah, the Spears restaurant was there in 1955. In 1961, Lee, item number uh, 18, if you would, June the 18th, 1961, was the first reference I could find to the Ivy Room and it was of course located at 132 South Church Street and you see there dine at the Ivy Room and enjoy this Sunday special sliced turkey cold plate 125 um, my Facebook post I had a bunch of folks post about this place uh, and remark about the food and so forth another neat thing was uh, supposedly and I, again this was before my time I was certainly alive then but I don't remember ever going in the Ivy Room but they said this thing was painted green on the inside. I guess the theme being ivy and so forth, it was green, the walls and so forth were green on the inside. Um, I have seen a, a photograph um, of, and you can't tell anything about it, that's why I didn't share it with you tonight, but there's a photograph circulating around of, a, I think it's a booth and, a couple, and a, maybe a couple of people eating uh, inside uh, supposedly the ivy room, but again, it's black and white, it's kind of old and grainy, so you really can't make out anything that would allow you to distinguish this. It could have been any restaurant in town, in other words. But anyway, yeah, 1961, this was the first article or advertisement I could find. Now, the ivy room, according to the Rocky Mount City directories, actually opened up in 1958, so I'm going to clarify that. This ad appeared in 1961, but the Ivy Room itself came into being in 1958, according to the Rocky Mountain City Directory. I couldn't find any listing in the city directory prior to 1958, and this was the first ad that I could actually find in the Rocky Mountain Telegram, which I thought was odd, uh, because they were in business in 1958, but I could not find an advertisement until 1961. So a little bit of discrepancy there between the uh, city directory and the Rocky Mount Telegram. I won't say discrepancy, I just, I'm, I'm going to guess that the, 
Uh, they maybe when he first started out weren't doing any advertising in the telling, we'll put it that way. Okay, 1963, interestingly enough, uh, the man who ran the Ivy Room acquired a partner. Uh, and you see the headline there, Williamston Man Acquires Partnership in a Local Ivy Room. This article appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram May the 19th, 1963. And it says, Paul Conway of Williamston has become a partner in Ivy Room Restaurant at 132 South Church Street. He will operate it with P.O. Pool of Durham. So I'm not sure, uh, it does not mention in any of the literature that I've seen who was actually the person who opened up uh, the Ivy Room restaurant in 1958. I'm not sure who that was, uh, but apparently um, this Mr. Uh, Conway and this Mr. Poole uh, became partners uh, in 1963, and they ran the restaurant um, for a while, but not very long. And the reason I say that is um, by 1964, I began seeing advertisements and listings in the Rocky Mount City Directory for the Duchess. Um, in fact, the Duchess actually operated there at that location from 1964 to 1982. And uh, there was actually a family member, uh, the daughter of the original owner of the Duchess restaurant, who posted a nice post on my Facebook post and gave a little bit of history about um, her family. Uh, and, you know, after her father died, her and her, I think her sisters or brothers, uh, ran the restaurant for a few years. Uh, and she even made a comment that uh, after they sold the business to another entity, um, it didn't last very long and then it went out of business again. So anyway, that was this article appeared in 1963. And as I said, the, the Duchess occupied the space at 132 South Church Street from 1964 until 1982. Now, in 1984, the uh, Townhouse Restaurant opened up at 132 South Church Street, of course, same location, and I could not find but one reference to the townhouse, and I got a little bit ahead of myself. Let's back up just a minute. Lee, put up, if you would, item number 20. Um, my pictures got out, of, out a little bit out of signals here, but that's okay, uh, because this, uh, here you go, this ad appeared, or this picture and article appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram, April 28, 1981, and you see here, drive-through service. The caption says, no one was seriously injured in an accident yesterday afternoon on the corner of Church Street and Western Avenue, but the Duchess restaurant took a direct hit. According to police, the vehicle driven by Howard Porter Greenville and Nash County Deputy La uh, Laverne Lewis were headed north on Church Street when Porter attempted a left turn onto Western Avenue from the center lane and his car collided with the deputies. Talk about bad luck, making an illegal turn into a deputy's car. Uh, the autos then traveled toward the restaurant and Porter's car crashed into the front door. Porter was charged with a safe movement violation. So this was in 1981, and oddly enough, this was not the first time that building was hit by a vehicle. I'll show you another picture in a minute when it got hit again, and it was almost a third time it got hit. Now, this is kind of odd too, because um, this is 1981, of course, and 19, by 1984 was when the townhouse restaurant uh, occupied the space. So Lee, item number 21, this uh, little ad here appeared in the Rocky Mountain Telegram, December 28, 1984, and it's a, it's a short blurb in the police report listing the paper that day for a burglary that took place uh, at 132 South Church Street, as you can see there, it was called the Townhouse Restaurant. This is literally the only ad, only reference, only listing uh, anywhere that I could look and look through, including the Rocky Mount Telegram, uh, city directories. I could not find another listing or another mention of the Townhouse Restaurant other than this when they were broken into. Um, the lady whose family ran the Duchess in her commentary about the Duchess restaurant on my Facebook page, she said that when they sold the business, um, the gentleman who took it over did not last there very long. So uh, I don't know if he had poor health or poor management or just bad luck. I don't know what happened. Uh, but in any case, he was obviously had a victim of a burglary, got broke into, and this was in December of 1984, so toward the end of the year. 
uh, but I could not find another reference to the townhouse restaurant being in business beyond 1984. Okay. Uh, I mentioned that the, the building had been hit by another vehicle, and some of you may remember May 20th, 1998, I believe you would, item number 22, um, a Rocky Mountain City bus plows into Central Cafe. Uh, this was just a miracle nobody got seriously hurt or killed. There were 15 diners dining in Central Cafe when this happened, and this bus barreled through, and uh, it was a fairly long article, I'm not gonna try to read it, but in any case, I remember when this happened, uh, and the, the restaurant was shut down for a period of about six or eight weeks, as I recall, while they repaired that gaping hole in the side where the bus drove into the building. And again, no one was injured, not the bus driver, nor anyone seated, seated in the restaurant, and it's just an absolute miracle that nobody got killed when that bus come crashing the side of that building. But this happened, uh, well, at least this article appeared in the paper, uh, May 20th, 1998. Um, in my original copy, a little bit better than the one I printed off for myself, because the copy I've got here in my hand is very, very light. I'm not going to try to read it. Uh, but in any case, as I said, this was the second time that that building was hit by a vehicle, first by an automobile and secondly by a bus. I'll just get this call. Hello, caller, you on the air? All right, I'll be quick again. Okay. That building, when it was being operated as the Duchess Restaurant, was operated by a man named W.C. Adams. He, with his brother Doug Adams, were two of the owners of the Dairy Bar out there on Raleigh Street with Gene Arnold. And when the Dairy Bar clo it didn't close, it changed hands. That's when W.C. Adams went up there and got involved and renovated the Duchess Restaurant and, and changed the name of it from the Ivy Room to the Duchess. Okay. All right. Good deal. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I mentioned a moment ago that uh, the restaurant was actually after it got hit by the bus. It was shut down for a period of time. I think I said six weeks. It wasn't quite that long uh, because on June 27th of 1998, item number 23, if you would, Lee, um, this was an article that appeared in a newspaper, and it makes a reference uh, to the Central Cafe almost set to reopen. Now, I've highlighted a couple things here in yellow. Number one, I didn't realize this. In 1998, down the very bottom left-hand side, it says, Dr. Tom Souter owns the building and told Hardy, that would be Boots Hardy that was running at the time, uh, and his brother John, well, let me back up there. I'm not sure which one was Boots, actually. <laughs> anyway, um, that, that need not worry about the rent for the time they were closed. Souter's insurance covered the damage to the building and to things that were attached to the building. So I never knew Dr. Souter actually owned that building at least in 1998. Now, I'm not sure how long he owned it, uh, and I'm not sure uh, if he was the owner for the duration prior to Central uh, opening up there. But at least in 1998, when the bus hit it, Dr. Souter, uh, and that's of course the uh, Dr. Souter was the father of uh, the WRL sports newscaster, uh, Tom Souter, Tom Souter Jr., uh, in any case. And one more neat thing, uh, over on the right-hand side, I didn't highlight this in yellow, but in this bottom picture here, uh, it says Lewis Front and Brown move a table in a position. It's talking about two employees of Central Cafe, and the Brown is referring to is Brad Brown, who now runs in partnership with the guy that runs. Um, oh, we got a call. Let's get this call. Hello, caller. You on the air? All right. It's been my understanding for a long time that that building on the corner right there, when it was built, is the Ivy Room. Initially, the Sudos owned the house that was on the corner there, and the Sudo house had to be taken down to build the building that was initially the Ivy Room and later the Duchess. It was in the Sudo family, and Caddy Corner from that corner over there at the municipal parking lot uh, across from the front door of the First Baptist Church. That vacant lot that was a municipal city parking lot, that's also Dr. Suda's family's property. Well, that stands to reason because this article states that Dr. Souter did own the building, and so um, he may have owned it all along. I'm not sure. It doesn't say how long he owned it, but it does say that he owned the building in 1998. So it was on the corner there. Was a suit the Souter house? That's right. That's right. Bye. All right, buddy. Thank you. Okay, so we're almost out of time. Anyway, Brad Brown's was my. Uh, is he, he and Alan, I've got Alan's last name, run Oak Level Cafe now. 
Okay, uh, I mentioned that it was almost a third time that building was hit by a car. Uh, July 12, 1998, literally two months after it got hit by the bus, uh, there was another accident right in front of it, um, and luckily no one was hurt. This time the car stopped before they got to the building, but it was really close, and they interviewed Brad Brown, and he's, they asked him, was he worried? He said, worried? Uh, he said, yeah, I was a little worried it was getting to be dangerous corner down here. We sit so close to the street, and people drive a little fast on this road since it's the old US 301. He said, the restaurant employees jokingly refer to the booths located by the front window as Braveheart seats. I guess you gotta be pretty brave to sit in those seats by the window. Oh boy, I had a few more I wanted to get to. I just realized we're about run slam out of time. I'll tell you what, I'll save these for next week's show. Uh, these are some more old, oh, I, this, there you go, I wanted to show this one anyway. For those that didn't know where 132 South Church Street is, and I, I can't believe anybody did not know, but this is it. Uh, as I said, this is uh, over to your left, that's uh, Western Avenue, to your right, going off at an angle there is Church Street. And um, as Eric said, uh, across Church Street from the Central Cafe slash Duchess was um, the Rocky Mount Utilities, um, not Utilities, Rocky Mount Public Works something to do with the city of Rocky Mountain anyway. And by the way, I, I failed to mention, today is a fellow named Anthony, I forgot Anthony's last name, but this restaurant is back open. I've eaten there a couple times already. The food's actually not too bad. They've got your regular hot dogs and hamburgers, but they also carry a pretty pretty good menu of what I like to call soul food or country cooking. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance to get down there and check them out, you need to do so. Um, but Anthony is doing a pretty good job, I think, down there. I've only been a couple times, but both times the food was good. So once again, there is an operating restaurant at 132 South Church Street. Let me bring it back to me, folks. That's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you so much for tuning in, as always, and thank the callers who called in and shared your memories and your knowledge about these things with us. I always appreciate that. That's all I got tonight. Take care of yourselves. Have a great week, and we'll see you. Oh, be kind to one another, and we'll see you next week with more Way Back Wednesday. Good night.